Welcome, everybody. Welcome. Look at us. We are out of the house. <laughs>
that was my rendition of His Eyes on the Sparrow, which is the first track off of my solo album that was released in November called Rest Assured on all streaming platforms. But it also has a special meaning for me because that was my grandma's favorite song. And she would sing that and had the voice of a sparrow. And so it's a song that is a song about reassurance to me. And Lord knows we need that right now, given Ukraine, given Omicron, and given everything. But it's also a song that really speaks to the power of my family coursing through me. So thank you so much. And speaking of family, this next piece is entitled Textures, and short for Textures of Love. And it's a song I wrote with my wife in mind. And it's, we've been married for almost seven years now, and so it speaks to all the textures of love. And so if you have love, be it romantic or platonic, I hope that you can feel the textures yourself in this piece.
And it is a song from my band, The Juju Exchange. I am also part of this jazz electronic fusion group based out of Chicago, and we're childhood friends and proud of it. And we have a few records out, um, the latest one being the Eternal Boombox EP. And these projects have just been such special places. I'll talk about it more when Nina and I share. But I right now want to pay a piece from our first record entitled Exchange, which came out in 2017. A little story about this, it's actually connected to this sweater. I wear an orange sweater every time I perform because of my time working as a prison chaplain down in Atlanta. The boys who come in, they come in wearing blue. But if you try to escape or you become especially boisterous, they put you in orange to mark you as especially dangerous. So I wear this in solidarity with them because the time I spent with them showed me just how much everybody needs patience. And everybody is a patient. And so this song, P-A-T-I-E-N-T-S, is a song for me, a song for them, a song for anybody in need of healing.
this concert is called Music's Patient. About how we've been healed by music. I know some people who have come over some mountains. So I play this song in your honor. Celebrating with you. How God's been faithful. That is one of my favorite, my favorite, um, my favorite songs, honestly. For every mountain you've brought me over, for every trial you've seen me through. Oh Lord. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Amen. I have one more for this part, which is a song that I'm going to dedicate not only to the healing that we need. Um, given loss, but also obviously what's happening right now in Ukraine and what could very well be happening elsewhere um, sooner than we'd like to think. This song is called What Loss, and it is a song that I wrote for and with the band, the Juju Exchange. We wrote it for this oratorio that we did a few years ago, commissioned by an orchestra in Chicago to perform it with them in Chicago Children's Choir. And the piece is all about the Native Americans who were taken from the lands that we now call Chicago. But given that that is the story for so many places of people who've been dispossessed and continually are dispossessed and displaced, I am dedicating it to everybody who is suffering through that here in these lands that we now call Durham. And so this is what loss. And I also dedicate it to people who are contending with loss and never getting over, but learning to live with.
stay over there at the piano if you want to. I am not mad. How about Julian Reed? Thank you. So we're going to have a conversation about, we said we we're going to let it flow, didn't we? Uh -huh. So we're going to let it flow. Part of the reason I played that last piece as the last piece was because we met in part because there was a beautiful album. If you haven't heard it yet, Time Traveler from Nina um, came out last year and nominated for a Grammy. And uh, <laughs> and I was connected through a mutual connect to write a piece for this magazine, Scalawag Magazine, which is based here out of Durham. All right, I've heard about it, let's go. Uh, so I was contacted by the Arts and Soul editor, uh, Dr. Alicia Nicole Harris, to write a piece on Nina um, and the album. And that started the relationship, and that was coincidentally simultaneous with my talking with Duke about coming here. So just the way we were able to connect was amazing. But if, if you don't know, you know, Nina wrote this, or created this album out of loss in her own life. And, and so I wrote that piece, thinking about it, thinking about you, but then I also played that, thinking about you and how, again, not getting over, but living with, um, that that's such a powerful testament to your love, to your commitment, to music, um, to faith, to black life. And so I'm just thankful that that was able to come up tonight, let alone what's happening overseas. Absolutely. Um, I, for those of you who don't know, um, I, I hesitate to say lost my husband because he is present in so many ways. Amen. Um, but he is no longer in the physical realm. We were married 40 years. And then six months after that, my sister transitioned. And so it, it looked as if um, my entire world was turned inside out. And so the thing that I always went to was my music, right? That's my happy place. That's my place where I could find solace and you know, comfort and joy. It was unavailable to me. It was unavailable to me. Um, and I didn't know if it would ever be available to me again. Um, so I'm gonna ask you um, to play the piano and we're gonna have a conversation like that. How about that? How about it? How about that? And so I was a little disappointed that loss and grief spilled its contents all over my perfect little life. My life was good. I was happy. Had everything. tall like you were and very handsome those of you who knew him can raise your hand and say yes he was I couldn't pray So my grandma 
grandmother used to sing this song. And the song was called Sweet Hour of Prayer. Some of you know it, but it didn't seem sweet to me at the time. Sweet, sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer. was wishing for? I was wishing for a life I had. Mm, so she wrote, give me back what I had. Give me back what I had. This is how you know it's God. He never takes you back where you were. Even when the new place is strange and uncomfortable. I was praying for that and God said, no, I want you here. And I, 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 I was confused. I'm still confused. On some days, don't you just get confused? And if I tell the truth, I was a little angry too. But check it out. 
I had a dream of a long white table laden with food, every type, every kind, some I could identify and others not so much. <laughs> a long, 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 long table as far as the eye could see. And a voice said, why you stopping for crumbs? Why you stopping for crumbs? Why you picking the crumbs off the floor when I have prepared a feast for you? A feast for you. You stopping for crumbs, my love. You stopping. And I looked, I could see delicious fruits just out of reach, just out of reach. Everything I thought I had lost laid on the table. This is yours, this is yours, this is yours, this is yours, this is yours. I was so humbled to feel that all of this for me because he loved me he loved me oh the feast of memory the feast no more crumbs crumbs of sadness sometimes knows I'm scared of heights. Up the rough side, up the rough side, knees all scabbed. Mm, but one side, one side ascended and got my Still scared of heights, mind you. The view, the view, the view of your rotten human, oh, the view. There was mother, there was daddy. I loved, I loved, I loved, I loved, I loved, I loved. I want you to look. I was afraid. I want you to look. 
I didn't want to see it. I want you to know I couldn't bear. I'm afraid of heights, don't you know? Look, not down, but out and up. When I opened, 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 opened my eyes, it was amazing. When they leave the physical realm, they are just right over there. What if we can rejoice and eat of the feast in our lives, even when death seems so unfair?
So, here we are. Here we are. So I see a record coming. I see a record coming. That's what I see. You know, and it's true. I really was begging God for, you know, when I worked on time travel, I yeah, was yeah, like, yeah. please don't let me be sounding all sad and please just let me have a little bit of what I had. Uh -huh. And the way I know it was God is he gave me more. Wow. God never takes you where you were. Yeah. Even the natural world teaches us that. Not a single snowflake, exactly like any other uh -huh, snowflake. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Why would we go back there and repeat? That's not how God works. So I didn't want more. I didn't want different. I didn't think I could, you know, I was yeah. happy to settle for, you know, a little something, something, uh -huh. kind of sort of like what it was. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, know? yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? Different. Yeah, that was that banquet, that image, that's what got me. I, the banquet. Yeah, the banquet. The banquet. The banquet and the memories. And you know, it was, it's all there, right? It is all there. And what was coming to me was my mentor who I lost. Um, and who was this? Kenneth Lewis, he was a music director down in Atlanta at Our Lady of Lords Catholic Church. And um, we had two years together. I knew him for two years. And he passed in November 2020, days before my first solo concert. Mm. So, I mean, just all of this is really crashing in. You know, the waves are crashing in on that day. And then for me to be doing solo now, and then for you to be talking about the banquet of memories and how it's all there, and, and then you're going beyond. Um, there's so much I wish you could have seen. I wish you could have seen this, and I could call him right now in the physical and tell him I just had this time at Duke, you know. Um, my phone just erased all of our texts because, you know, it's long enough back oh, in the I see, log. I see, I see, I see. Yeah. So, you know, just there's so, all these signs that are kind of coming up saying there's a new, there's a new chapter you're in. So, so thank you for taking me there um, and to just follow you like that. It really felt like we were in the same, we were really on the same plane, yo. <laughs> we just met each other uh, 20 minutes before. We played for y'all. Yeah, that was, uh, there was some other kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't even say what it was, because I don't know what it was. Um, I do know that the banquet is real, though. Mm -hmm. And it's not, it's a secret that it's a banquet. It's a secret. You can't tell anybody newly bereaved that there's a banquet. They don't want to hear that. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. When grief is fresh, you are, you are hungry. There's a hunger mm -hmm. yeah. that's like you never, like you have never eaten before. Your belly is empty, your brain is empty, your backbone is empty, you are empty. But the banquet's always there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it waits for you. Yeah. And at first you'll nibble a little something, something, but it'll taste like stones in your mouth and you I don't want it. I don't want it. Because my beloved, my friend, my child, my daughter, my son, my mother is gone. Mm -hmm. But grief doesn't own a watch. Wow. Or a compass. Wow. Or a yardstick. Yeah. None of that measuring stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. And it's ever patient. It is. So. You can be busy, 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 busy. That's my role. I get busy, 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 busy. I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. I'll, me, me, I'll do it. Because I don't want to look at that. Mm. Not because I'm doing good stuff. I'm just like, I'm not being a human being. I'm being a human doing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'm all over the place, yeah. and grief is just sitting there, <laughs> smoothing her dress down, saying, oh, look at her. She busy. She going to get tired after a while. <laughs> oh, yeah, look at her mouth dry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look at her. 
Poor thing. Mm -hmm. She'd be all right, though. She'd fall out in a minute. Whoop, there she go. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. And then when you get knocked down by illness or exhaustion, mm -hmm. that's when that still small voice grandma talked about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you'd be all vulnerable. <laughs> Woo! I hear it. That's some other kind of stuff. It is. I remember when I was able to start welcoming him back. And that was actually alongside when Notes of Rest, this uh -huh. spiritual retreat. Can you tell everybody about Notes of Rest? Sure, yeah. So Notes of Rest is a contemplative spiritual retreat I host that takes you through a passage um, either scripture or I, I've done it with black authors and you just go through and you sit with the passage you ask questions I ask you questions and then I play for you to accompany you as you move through it I was doing that at Duke this week um, it was just an honor to be here and that really was this deep fusion for me part of what I think Kenneth saw he might not have seen notes of rest in particular but he was seeing deep through me into my future and was I think just coming along at the time when I was looking to be un, under somebody else or on somebody else's mm -hmm. ticket, he was like, Julian, you have a voice, say it, mm -hmm. say it. And so when I could start welcoming him back was alongside when I started to actually listen to what he was trying to teach me. And so the retreat is a space for me to really work out this kind of abundance that Kenneth saw, to work from that, to work out of it, and then to invite others into their own abundance. And so that started to really suffuse my playing, and that's why I played the way I did for y'all tonight. Because that was really coming from an abundance that Kenneth saw that God had put in me. So yeah, grief doesn't own a watch, um, and grief travels with you, but grief can also open you on to a new banquet. Yeah. To yeah. I mean, I, I, yes. Yeah, so yes. I'm, I'm really glad to have shared, you know, from the banquet tonight with y'all, and then also throughout this week for those of y'all here from Duke. Um, sharing from the banquet of my story, of my pain, um, and my joy. Does, um, we wanted to have this be a sharing kind of thing, where anybody who may have a question of Julian and I, or just want to share something, I think it's deeper and more rich when we, when we share. This isn't just about us, that banquet is available to every single human being. And one thing about the spirit is it's equal opportunity. There's no, oh, you get some, but no, not you. There's none of that. So if anybody would like to, you know, come on, show on, show on, as they say. Don't y'all be shy. Music's patient. Music is patient. Mm -hmm. You could always play some more. I'm with that. You with that? Mm -hmm. How about we play a little bit of something and then someone will speak from the audience. How about that? <laughs> or I will pick you and say, you look like you have a story. Let's hear it. This is a song written by Errol Garner, which all the jazz singers sing it, all the greats have sung it, and the fact that it was your grandmother's favorite song, what was your grandmother's name? Gwendolyn Newberry Miss, Davis. Miss Gwendolyn Newberry Davis, okay. I gotta be on my extra good singing.
just holding your hand walk walk my way and a thousand turn. 
Yo, she's a bad cat, ain't she? <laughs> yes, love. It's a mystery. If we told the truth, everybody would be doing it right. <laughs> That's a great question. It's a great question. Yeah. Part of what helped in this case, I mean, honestly, I've never experienced this in this way before. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, this is different. You different. mean everything you do, you work it out ahead of time? No, no, no. I mean, I flow, but your storytelling, your presence. Oh, okay how you're engaging the past and the ancestors and you're pointing to the future. You've done such a deep kind of work in you that when you come for the flow, yeah. I'm just listening in a different way. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. so part of it has to do with everything that's outside the music, you know, just how you attend to yourself. What's it mean to do that inventory of where you are in the moment and how, and your spiritual disciplines, your, you know, and I've, I, we've had conversations, so that's helped, so I kind of know, but even if I did it, and the deeper I get into trying to deal with my own stuff, the better I can hear the accent of somebody who's really dealt with theirs. And so that comes out also in the musical moment, you know, the accent of contemplation, um, that accent of attention. And so part of the flow is just attending to that, because sometimes I just hear the accent of anxiety. Or, and I just gave a whole lecture about restlessness this morning, but I can hear, I can feel that, you know, when people are here, there, let me show off and all this. Um, but to be with such a veteran, to play, it's just an honor. So that's, that's part of the flow is to just, to feel her foundation and her stateliness um, and, then, and then to follow in the moment, yeah. Yes, yes, that's it. Deep calls to deep. That's funny you should say the word deep. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I, I think there's a trust. Mm. There's a real, there's a trust. Not only in what you're going to do or what you think you're going to do, because we did talk about, we had a plan, kind of, sort of. We didn't do that, though. We didn't do that. We called out tunes. We called out keys. The, they were in the back in case there was nothing but a cool breeze blowing between my ears, which has happened on occasion. I mean, really. And so there's trust that I have of this human being who I only just met in the f real world, but who I feel like I have known. And then there's also resting on everything I've experienced. I am an authority on my experience. So I could roll with it all night long. <laughs> I could tell you stuff, you'd be like, whoa, that's a little personal. <laughs> so I didn't have to pull from a place at a distance. I pulled from something mm -hmm. that was right here mm -hmm. and I trust that Every single one of you has that too. Mm -hmm. So we were doing this, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. connecting soul to soul, connecting experience to experience. And when people feel that yes. trust, you have, I trust myself to tell my truth. That allows you to trust yourself to tell yours and to be in this moment. I don't know that it could have been done without an audience. What do you think? I agree. Mm -hmm. So you're a big part of this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I could feel your energy yeah. also. I could feel, you know, I could feel the, the, um, the vibration. Yeah, oh yeah, I of, felt the rest. Yes. And uh, yeah, just, <laughs> the, today I was talking a lot about how restlessness begets restlessness mm -hmm. and restfulness mm -hmm. begets restfulness. Yes. And so for those who were at school with me, this is it. This is the whole thing, just seeing it. The sound that I make comes from that. 
and y'all's attention. You all are focused. And I can feel when audiences aren't. Mm -hmm. You know, you can feel that. We've mm -hmm. talked about that. Mm -hmm. Just the attention and just the presence that you all have that then lends to a different kind of exploring, spelunking, you know, to talk about the caves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so just be in the caves of grief or joy or wonder. But yeah, you can be in there in all kinds of dispositions. It's but so true. we spelunked well. <laughs> Getting on down deep in there. Yeah. And sometimes down there it's dark. Mm -hmm. But it's okay. It's okay. Because um, sometimes you can see better in the dark. Mm -hmm. I also want to say that I, you know, the space and clearly the way that it's so deeply embedded in the wisdom of black life. That I mean, improvisation is so huge. It's a, it was a huge part of us before we got here, and it's a, still a huge part of us. And so when you're with folk who are really tapped into that sense of ancestral awareness, doing their homework uh, inside and again beyond the music, it, it, then it can, it can flow. Well, we have help, yeah, you know. Yeah, let's just yeah. be honest. Yeah. It, I mean, it's a little less about performance mm -hmm. and a little more about being open mm -hmm. to the flow mm -hmm. of the mysterious thing we can't even really say what it is but when we tamp it down it becomes a performance mm -hmm. we all have things we can do well mm -hmm. I mean I got a whole repertoire of stuff I can hit every note and I have worked it all out but when you give yourself permission to let the flow happen then you start playing over your head up above my head, <laughs> I hear music in the air. Mm -hmm. When they sang that, they meant that. They meant that for real, for real. That there was something more than the physical, something more than what I know how to do, something more than my studying in, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. in, in class and learning my yes. the scales. And there's yes. something more than yes. all of that that falls away Yes, and then up yes. springs this thing, and you stand back and you're like, well, what was that? Yeah, that's right, that's right. Mm -hmm. And it humbles you. It really does. I mean, not in, a, in any other way than you, and, and we get so confused about what humility and humbleness is, we think it's like, tip the head, mm. lower the shoulders, walk with a slouch. That's not humble. Humble is of the earth. Humble is rooted and secure. It's not dragging your hind parts. That's not what humble is. Humble means you belong to this big, fat planet. It's all yours. You are it. It is you. You are haven't you ever seen anybody float into the room? They're like up here and you're like, okay, that one's not humble. Oh, wow. That one's on some other, <laughs> on some other kind of energy right there. Oh, wow. But when they say, come on back down to earth. Oh, wow. Let them shoulders relax. Be like the trees and the tortoises and all of the other animals. Yeah. Be like that. And it's less work too. <laughs> you know, you don't have to do, you don't mm -hmm. have to walk around like this. You yeah. know, you can just be, ah, oh, man. And I can tell when I'm playing like this. Yeah, right. You know, I, I can hear it, my lines feel different. I'm rushing or I'm dragging or I'm just in my head. But when I'm playing from the dirt, you know, we're about to, I'm about to celebrate Ash Wednesday in a couple of weeks. Or not celebrate, that's the weird word. But I'm about to observe Ash Wednesday. Uh, and you get the sign of the cross, you know, from dust you came to dust you shall return. And that's just such an important reminder that, as somebody was saying, uh, that there was a preacher on Tuesday at chapel at Duke, uh, you are dust with consciousness. I think it was, yeah. was that the line? Yeah. You're a dirt with consciousness. Yeah. And you know, and it was powerful in Hebrew, uh, the word that ends up, we get Adam, the word for humanity from Adamah, which is earth. Mm. 
And so there, you, one, you can't separate the two. In English, you kind of lose some of that. But human yeah. is the same as humility and hummus. <laughs> and hummus, which I love. <laughs> OK. I love hummus. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So for all the chickpea lovers out there. Yes. All the chickpea. You are all the chickpea, chickpea. Yeah. I love it. Anybody else? Thoughts? Yes. Yes. Please. So how has the black church formed your gift, your talent? And first of all, thank you for telling your truth and singing your truth. And, and thank you again, Julian, for all you've given and shared with us. How for both of you, how has the black church Supported, form, shape, your gift, your talent. I love how Robert Glasper, a very famous pianist, says it. He says, the black church is black America's conservatory. And true. I just think that's yeah. so, that's, that's true. so true, yo. It's just so true. So, I mean, so many cats across the genres, they've come out of playing. And what I'm thankful for in going to St. Mark United Methodist Church all uh, growing up, was just how much time I got to play and hack away at bad stuff, and all the grandmothers would just applaud and they would cheer me on. Amazing, I was hacking it's away, true. hacking up a lot. But they would just say, go on ahead, you know. And I, I went across the street and played for somebody and still hacking up a lung, and they, and, they, and they clapped. And so I'm so thankful that I had that space to explore, to start figuring out how to really hear and again, be open. Um, and just under amazing teachers. Um, and all those intangibles, you know, like giving space for her when she wanted to kind of come down reminded me of hum time, you know, a communion, mm -hmm. when everybody just hums the hymns. Yeah. Like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. We were talking about that the other day, Dr. Smith, the hum. You know, just that, these intangibles, you know, and they show up in the sound. And I, they show up in my body. and. I know when not to play and just let space for the hum. So yeah, there are all these intangibles, these ways of knowing that I'm just so thankful for, yeah. I have to say the same thing, that the black church was my, um, my cauldron, my space of growing. Um, and I love that my church made space for people who couldn't sing. <laughs> And whenever Ms. Dotton would stand up, she was bow-legged. Make a joyful noise. <laughs> but she would whip that spirit up. Yeah. Couldn't sing a lick. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. God, yeah, God show me, God show me a lot. God. So yeah, the so so she she ended up not being in the choir, but she was there before the choir got there to make sure that the room was set. Yeah. So, you know, and, and the things that were said, the things that were not said, the yes. thing, the, the encouragement that you got, yes. that that little baby, you lifted my spirit, that kind of thing, which uh, yes. kind of gave you a permission yes. to to be who you who you are, and it was a safe space. Mm -hmm. It, it was also a safe space to make mistakes. Be, and it was a safe space to learn about improvisation because you could be minding your own business, chewing some yes. bazooka bubble gum, <laughs> which you weren't supposed to. Mm -hmm. You weren't supposed to be chewing no gum at church, but you were chewing it. <laughs> and then it seemed like the preacher knew you were chewing bazooka. <laughs> and he would say, the Lord is telling me I need a word, a, a, a song from Sister Pierce. And I'm like, yeah, you were talking about me. I'm gonna have to swallow this much bubble gum to be able to stand up and sing it, not choke. I'm just saying, somehow they know. Yeah. So you had to be ever ready. Ever ready. With be a song, ready. you know, and it no, don't nobody know the key. That's Don't it. nobody, the, the piano player be like, you know, and he'd be going, uh, uh, half steps up, half steps down, trying to find you. And then we land somewhere, yeah. and it was always okay. It wasn't until I left the black church that I realized some tunes are only in one key. <laughs> Not 
Not all, 12. Amen. Does they be moving around and then we just like, oh, she done left this key, let's go with her. So, yeah, oh yeah. Oh man. So much labor is hidden. <laughs> <laughs> so much labor remains hidden. I'm an MD and I'm following cats and uh, uh, we gonna move? No, he's not moving on. Okay, here we are. We're still there, we're still there. Are you trying to be hip yeah. or are you just meandering? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I see those hand signals. Oh yeah. You know, when you have a little quartet or something, a couple chordal instruments, people be like, or if the minister is, or the preacher just gets the spirit, mm -hmm. you gotta keep that thing moving. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You gotta keep the spirit moving. You can't, you can't be like the song is over. No, there's always more song. That's right, that's right. There's more. Oh, yep, yeah, no, no, but there's more. Mm -hmm. Turn it around, yeah, that's keep right. going. That's right. Learn how to pivot, yeah. Learn how to pivot. Learn how to pivot, yeah. Anybody else? How do you give yourself permission to feel open? How do you allow yourself permission to let the light shine just a little bit? Wow. Wow. That's a real question right there. And I don't know that I have the answer to it, except to say that it is us. We are the ones who have turned away. I know that's the truth for me. And for a while, I only wanted the darkness. The darkness was all right with me. And there are still days when it's like, I don't wanna be around nobody today. I'm gonna do me. And if I have to cry, feel what I feel, I'm gonna feel what I feel. But it's clouds. It's not who I am, it's a cloud. And it seems like more and more, the more I acknowledge and accept that I'm feeling some kind of way, it's like, okay, I got her to check in with herself. She's all right now. It's time for some pistachio ice cream. <laughs> and it's personal. I realized I didn't want to feel okay because I lost my husband. I didn't want to feel all right with that. That was absolutely not okay. So I had to look at myself feeling that way and wondering how is this going how is this going to work out if you are forever in this space where you're not okay with being or you're okay with being not okay. And little by little, I had moments. One moment a day is enough. One moment a day, of, one, 10 seconds of joy, a half a cup, a thimble full, something that you can look at and, and, and breathe. Something you can notice. Because it, the, the entire natural world is begging for your attention in grief. I had a turtle show up. You know, turtles move slow. It's like, what is she doing here in the front? You know, she was moving slow. I wouldn't have even noticed her if I had been in my regular life. I would have been, Phil, there's a turtle. Take it down to the water. It's a turtle. She stuck her head out of her shell. And she looked me in the eyeball. <laughs> right in the eye with them slitty eyes. She do, they got weird looking eyes. She had all this stuff on her neck. She had a really long neck. And she looked at me. And I swear I heard her say, Take all the time you need. And then she put her head back in and went on about her turtle business. I would have missed that. Because I would have had my high heel self on and I would be on my way to my car. <laughs> 
to go to wherever I needed to be. And she would have just been something I walked by. But grief slowed me down. And if you wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, birds, butterflies, eagles, all feathers falling from the sky, little babies laughing, weird things showing up on your computer, all kinds of things will let you know that there is joy to still be experienced. But you gotta wait for it. You gotta have on these grief glasses that make you have compassion for everybody because everybody going through something. Isn't that right? Isn't everybody? And it's not even like necessarily a death. Some people have lost their job. That's huge. How am I going to make the rent? Am I going to get put out of my house? That's grief. So I would say patience, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Being patient. Absolutely. When I lost my mentor, one thing, and then my auntie the next month, and then my grandma a few months later. Mm. Um, yeah, I just remember how helpful it was for me to say to my wife, I'm so sad. I would just say that, just that simple sentence. Labeling emotions is a really good way to, you said acknowledge, just, just to process them. And I would just say that, and then she would say without missing a beat, it's okay to be sad. And that made all the difference. Um, and yeah. we would pray and you know talk about God, but really in those moments it was, it's okay to be sad. Wow. So thanks for asking. That's huge. That's, that was an awesome question. Are we have time for maybe one more? Because yes. When you put, when you have all these you know life experiences, um, how do you put when you write music? How do you put the experiences that you've gone through, the emotions that you felt? your spiritual life into notes um, and just something transmissible that other people can then understand, like coming from you out to them. Um, I guess with each of you, how do you, how do you go about kind of communicating the things that you've gone through in writing and music? Wow, that's an awesome, that's an awesome question too. Yeah, I, uh, when I, when I was writing textures, and in that case, I was actually thinking of a drama, like a little fable. I like to write fables sometimes. And I was thinking about these, lily, these frogs on these lily pads. And he really wanted to get to her, but there was an owl up in the branch. Oh. And he knew that if he came, and he was croaking to try to get her attention. He knew that to croak was actually to put his life at risk. And so at some point, he croaks, because he, he really wants her. She's you know, playing him to the left. She ain't listening. And so he's, but he's like, you know what? It's still worth it. And then the owl comes. He barely misses. The owl nicks his side, and he ends up bleeding. But that apparently is enough of devotion to satisfy her. And she bids him come. So he jumps across. The blood mixes in the water. And they hop away happily ever after. What? That's the, yes. yeah. that's, the, that's the fable behind textures. What? Uh, foggy love. <laughs> uh, who knew that it was all that? I didn't get all that. <laughs> Lord have mercy. My grandmother said as far as being intentional about making sure that your story gets to others. She, you know, her thing was just show up and leave God's business to God. Do your best, show up with your best self and the rest of it is none of your business as long as you show up. They gonna get it, they not gonna get it, they gonna get it in some different way, they gonna get it in the way they need to get it you did what you were supposed to do. You showed up. The only time we're looking at disobedience is when we don't show up. Because then nothing can happen. So just show up with your half a cup of whatever or your quarter of a cup or your empty cup or your half rehearsed or your song half finished or you know whatever it is, it's an offering. 
And if you don't get to, in, 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 you, know, you know, when we start worrying about how it's gonna be received and what people are gonna think, that's when we start going some other place. And it's hard because it's ju then judgment, judgment gets involved and it can, it can stop your creativity. You know, you can be like, oh, nobody's gonna understand this because this is my own part. That's what I thought. I thought that my experience was mine. If I put it on a record, only me and maybe my family members would be interested in it. And the thing is nominated for a Grammy. Hello. That shows me that this is not about just me. This is a universal thing we're dealing with here. I was at a talk yesterday at Duke um, between Dr. Kate Bowler out of Duke Divinity School and Lanicia uh, Ralphs Tinsley, who is a visual artist, mm -hmm. and both of them have contended heavily with grief. And Dr. Bowler had written a book, uh, No Cure for Being Human, and they were having a talk about it, and I forget which one said it, but I think it was Lanicia who said, who was a visual artist, she was saying, the more personal you are, the more personal you share in your art, for instance, the more universal it is. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. So that kind of comes to mind as you were just talking about what you did, yeah. Well, we are out of time. <clears throat> I want to thank all of you for coming and sharing this, these moments with us. Um, North Star Church of the Arts is here for you. Um, we hope to do more collaborative moments with Duke Initiatives, um, Duke Initiatives for Theology and the Arts. That is such a mouth. I'm gonna say Dita, 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 Dita. We hope to do more collaborative moments like this that are um, of your, you know, send us a little note on Facebook or wherever and say, I'd like to see this or I'd like to see that. And please join us, become a sustainer of our trusty little band, you know, become a sustainer and help keep these lights on and people like you coming and people like me singing and we're our lovely, say hello to our lovely new executive director, Jermaine James, yay! <laughs> and thank all of you so much, you have, you have nourished, you have nourished me and I am grateful Thank you. Julian Reed. Yo, thank you so much. Yeah.